Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the SDL2 C++ programming series. And as you can tell from the little text here, we are going to build an entity manager class. So what this is, is a way for us to have one place where we're going to create our game entities. So previously we've had a game entity class, which I'll review for those of you who are just joining the series. And for those of you who have been with me this whole time, well, that's where we're going to pick up. So we're going to be using some design patterns and I'll link some of those design patterns in the description below so that you can see some of those if you need a refresher. Essentially what we're going to have is an entity manager that has a uh, implementation as a singleton class and it's going to be sort of a factory where we can create all of our game entities. So that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how we build this. So before we talk about the actual design of the entity manager, I want to go ahead and just show our code layout from a previous lesson here. And you can see the include files, the source files, and so on. And it's not so important that you can read that, but I do want to take a look at our source file and the main here. And let me make this a little bit bigger so folks can see what's going on here. And the main problem that we have is that previously when we were creating objects, we just created them as global variables. And if anybody's ever told you before, global variables are not good, right? They're hard to keep track of. Anybody can have access to them. If they're pointers, they can get deleted anywhere. And with concurrent programs, we can also have some difficulties. So we want to get rid of creating our objects like this and have a single location or some class that has a single responsibility for creating our objects. And that's what this is, the entity manager. So let's talk just for a moment about the design of our entity manager. And basically the idea is to have one single class here and it is going to be a singleton. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I'm just going to, for now, implement it as a singleton to show you a pattern and then we could refactor it out or whatever if we need. So anyways, this is the entity manager. And the idea is in the previous application that we've been building, Pong, and that's part of the sample code that you have here, we create our objects here, right? This is the left paddle. And we create another object here for the right paddle and then another object at the ball uh, in our game. So the idea is all those things live inside of our entity manager and can be removed, accessed or modified. And this also opens us up to future designs later where we can have a sort of hierarchical relationship between entities. So for example, maybe we would want to eventually add some sort of lighting in our application. And we'd want that light to be a child of one of these paddles so that it moves with it back and forth or with the ball, etc., etc. So the entity manager could make that a little bit easier for us to manage this sort of hierarchical organization of our scene. That would be something called a scene graph or a scene tree if you want to look ahead on that. That's a common data structure in 3D applications and we could have put one in 2D just as well. Okay, so with that said, how are we getting rid of these freestanding game entities, these global variables here? Well, let me go ahead and show you what I've done here. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, back out of this code and into one of our sample codes here in lesson uh, 35. So feel free to check out that. That's always in the GitHub repository. Uh, if you have any troubles with it, please feel free to comment below. So the idea here is, well, we first got to start with building or designing our game entity uh, manager or just the entity manager as listed here. So what I've done in the include directory here is created the entity manager class here. And just to get an idea of what's going on is we really need some sort of key data structure for our entity manager. That is, how do I get access to each of these objects, the left paddle, the uh, right paddle, etc. And you might have noticed something subtle I did, but I just put in quotations right paddle and same with the left paddle and our ball object. So each of our entities are now actually going to have names and we can refer to those names in a data structure known as a map. So we refer to the string name, left paddle, right paddle, 
ball or whatever it is, and that'll return us the actual object or pointer to that object that we can actually manipulate and access. So that's the key idea with our entity manager. Let's go ahead and look at that data structure. And that is the unordered map here. I'm using an unordered map because it has O of one or constant time lookup access. That's faster than a map, which would be logarithmic. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. But basically what we have here is just a key value data structure. So I can look up by the name, whatever our object is that the user chooses, a string, and then get a pointer back to the object. Now, here's something that also might be new and you can refer to my C++ series, which I'll link the playlist below. But the idea is that I have a pointer, but not any kind of pointer, a special shared pointer here. Now shared pointers are going to help avoid some memory leaks and just make the ownership of various objects a little bit easier. We might want to think about if this is supposed to be a shared pointer or a unique pointer or these different things, but for now, <laughs> this will do the trick here. It's basically a wrapper around a raw pointer that makes our class a little bit safer to use. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and look at the design of the rest of this class here. And you'll notice I put everything here in the implementation or rather the interface file, the header. I'll move it out into the implementation later, but just for ease, I want to keep everything here. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and split this window here really quick, just so we can um, see a little bit more code here. Let me do a vertical split. And I've added one thing to our game entity, because remember, we're going to start referring to our entities by name. So as part of the constructor for our game entity, we have uh, the name of that entity that we are going to set up. And by default, it's just unnamed if they don't use the constructor. So that is an important addition, again, that we can refer to our game entities by name. Okay, so with that said here, our entity manager, this is part of the singleton design here. You'll notice that the uh, constructors and the destructors have just been declared private. Uh, in fact, I'll move them up here a little bit. And something I like to do stylistically is sometimes just define two private sections just to draw attention to the private member functions and the private data member uh, variables here. So that means, again, we cannot create an entity manager. We can only create one, and we have one static instance of it. Now, some folks like or don't like the singleton pattern. Not a debate for this video. I have another video on that where you can discuss the trade-offs. Uh, it just depends what your needs are. OK, so now that we have that sorted, let's go ahead and look at the important parts which are creating the entities here. So what we have here is how to create the entity, again, providing the name and the SDL render. So again, for each of our entities, if you recall, um, and if you don't, let me go ahead and just show you. Again, we have to pass in the renderer so we know which window we're actually drawing our uh, game objects in or our game entities. Uh, in the case that we have multiple windows, we need to do that. So then it's just a matter of making a pair because we're using an unordered map here to insert our uh, game entities here. And I'm also keeping track of the count of the entities. This isn't something that you have to do, but it is something that you uh, could do. So every time I create one, I can increment the count. Um, and in fact, every time I uh, remove one or successfully erase it, I should also uh, decrement the count here. So M and T count minus minus. So there we are here. Now you might want to check, um, you know, if the entity was found and these kind of things to do from error handling. Jack if entity um, was actually found, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, there's going to be more design things to uh, take care of here. So anyway, you see the little update there. All right. So once we have our entity manager uh, again, which is following the singleton pattern, and we can create entities, um, remove them, then we need to be able to return the entities. Well, this is where the unordered map data structure is really nice because we just have to look up by name whatever our entity is and then we return that pointer to that entity uh, and then we can access it um, essentially the same as we were doing before. Now there is more levels of indirection here. More indirection does cause some performance degradation because we have um, basically we're chasing pointers uh, and that's lots of levels of indirection. Again, that's something that can be optimized out. Perhaps we'll talk about it in a later video and some ways to optimize our uh, data structures. Okay. 
And then what I've done in the entity manager is I have an update all and a render all function. These are essentially the same thing. So just looking through one of them, basically I'm just iterating through our entire data structure. That is the entities, our unordered map and calling the update function or appropriately the render function, um, depending on which uh, member function was called here. And that's pretty much it. And you can see how this makes it very easy because all of our entities are collected together. Now, again, if you decide to implement some sort of graph data structure, you can traverse that graph in one of these render functions in that way. Okay, so that's sort of the uh, implementation of our uh, entity manager here. Let's go ahead and see how it's used in the main here. So let's go ahead and open up the source file here source and main. And you'll already notice that I've gotten rid of our game objects that were previously declared here as globals. So where are they? Well, I'll go ahead to the bottom of our source code here. And you'll go ahead and see that I have one line here where I'm creating the entities or one line each for each of the entities. And in fact, let me go ahead and close this so you can see things in a little bit nicer uh, view. So here's where I'm creating each of the entities. So I from my entity manager, I get the one instance and then call create entity, give a unique name and supply the render that I want to draw this game entity to. And that's pretty much it. So that's done there. I could do some error checking and some of these other things, um, but that's uh, not needed for now. All right. And then as, as far as actually using our paddle ball or whatever the game entities that you've created are, well, then it's a matter of just retrieving a specific entity by their name. So the left entity, or excuse me, the left paddle, right paddle, ball, and so on. And for now, I'm just creating a, a shared pointer here that's allocated on the stack and calling it left paddle, right paddle, ball, pretty much exactly what we were doing. In fact, these were the uh, names of those actual global variables previously, but now they're just on a stack allocated uh, shared pointer here. So it'll delete itself. I don't have to worry about it. I just use it temporarily or sort of a convenience to get a reference to this entity. And I'm saying reference here in the get entity ref because the unordered map returns a reference to some object uh, and then I can point the pointer to it. Okay, so then the rest of the code here essentially is left unchanged here. Um, and I have at the very end from our entity manager, I just call delete all entities. So you can see how that makes it very easy to clean up. I don't have to one at a time delete or remember to delete these global variables. Uh, in fact, at some point, I will want to put maybe sounds in their own sort of manager class and so on. OK, now let's actually see how each of these um, are used now or how to use our entity manager elsewhere. Because again, the goal is we need access in many places in our programs here. So you're going to notice at the top of these functions here that, well, I essentially just do the same thing. I just get an instance to whatever entity I want. I give it a temporary sort of variable here, and then I work with that variable to do pretty much all the same things that I was doing here. Uh, so that's the idea. So I do it again here for handling the right paddle movement, getting an instance of that particular object, and then just working with it. And in fact, I don't need to do this step here where I create this shared pointer. I could just from this um, sort of function call uh, add or append whatever I have here, get textured rectangle, get position X. I could put that all here, but the line was just getting a little bit too long. The compiler might be smart enough to just optimize away this anyway. Uh, and for now, I think it's a lot more readable. Now, what you might be wondering, especially if you're coming from sort of a Unity background, is, you know, this is a mouthful. This is a lot to type out. Uh, and that is certainly true. So this is where building a graphical user interface or these sorts of things to manage your object creation really can pay off. We're doing everything in code. Again, we could come up with some macros or other abstractions that simply, um, you know, call this in say one function to just get an entity ref. I could easily wrap that in a function. I'll let you go ahead and do that if you'd like um, and just have a function called uh, get entity ref. That's a free function that essentially calls this. In fact, uh, let me just sketch out because you might be a little bit intimidated uh, by the amount of typing. So basically I could just take this here. Uh, I have the return type here. Uh, and then I would just write a function called get entity 
ref, pass in the name, and this then moves up here, and this is what we are returning, except it is the name here. Okay, so you essentially end up with a bunch of these functions here. And again, if you're going to build a game engine on top of this, like I think I eventually am here, um, you would just have this one sort of free function to worry about. That's what you would wrap, export, etc. So again, just to make it a clean design. So you don't have to intimidate your users by typing all of this out. Now, with that said, I do think um, that covers pretty much everything I want to cover. I have the implementation, you can look at the code, but I did think it was useful to look at some other engines. Uh, I like looking at Ogre every once in a while, it's a graphics engine. And you can look at their sort of project setup uh, just to get an idea of you know how they set things up here. And you'll see similarly, they have a sort of root object. They have something called a scene manager uh, where they can get the uh, root from and then similar ways to basically call from the scene manager create light and name whatever that game entity is so again it can be useful to look at some of these other uh, game engines or graphic engines just to see their design or ways that you could sort of wrap and make this uh, a little bit cleaner or easier say to use uh, they just have the one instance so they're not using the singleton thing again my next next refactoring might actually be to take out the singleton at some point uh, and match a little bit closer to what Ogre has all right folks so i hope that was interesting i hope that was sort of an interesting crash course into building an entity manager and just gives you some ideas of the types of things you can build uh, and the extra power that you get it makes your code base cleaner even though i know it looks like it's more verbose uh, that is more text to type, uh, but it really can clean up your system. And again, our little game framework here is becoming more of an engine as we add in some of these features. In fact, this will make it a little bit easier if we wanted to add a layering system and sort of render things in layers. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to stay tuned, like and subscribe or comment below if there's something else that you'd like to see. And again, thank you for your time and attention.